Hey guys, so for today's video we're going to be taking a look at KDE Neon. So, KDE Neon, despite being based on the latest long-term support of Ubuntu, is not like any distribution we've seen on this channel before. Sure, it's, you know, a, a distribution that's based on Ubuntu and has KDE as the desktop and we've seen that a few times before, but KDE Neon seems to be built for something of a different purpose. Uh, it seems to be built to showcase the KDE Plasma desktop, because what they do is they take the latest long-term support of Ubuntu, and they get a repository that is made up of the latest and greatest software available from the KDE projects, um, and it makes it available uh, to you through this distribution uh, as it becomes available uh, officially. So what that means is that you end up with a distribution that is uh, identical to the latest long-term support of Ubuntu, but all of the KDE-related apps, they're all the, the latest versions that you can get. And it makes for a rather interesting experience. Now, I don't have too much to show you on the desktop here anyway, because uh, to be honest, in terms of the visuals, it's like for like identical to the Kubuntu uh, distribution that I demonstrated for you guys a while back. I can show you some of the basic software that it comes with. It didn't come with Simple Screen Recorder and because it's based on the latest LTS of Ubuntu, I actually had to install that from um, from the website itself, which is pretty easy, truth be told. So, the software it comes with, it comes with Firefox, which is actually quite interesting because if I was going to do a KDE-based distribution, I would imagine Cupzilla would be in there or Conqueror. Um, but um, but they decided that, and, and and maybe they might in future editions, or maybe that they just wanted to uh, to make this still in every way a working, usable distribution, and it is. I've been using it now for for about a week, I would say, and uh, I've been using it as 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 easily as I've been using the Kubuntu uh, Ubuntu based distribution. So. In terms of the end user usability, I found I found very little difference, truth be known, between Kubuntu and uh, KDE Neon. Or when I say Kubuntu, I'm really comparing it to 17.10. See, a lot of the software is uh, very similar in terms of versioning, except of course you've got the repositories that aren't. They're they're a bit more um, well, they're from 16.04, so they're a little bit on the older side. So you'll be using like uh, this distribution, and and from time to time you'll install a package that won't be there because it's a reasonably new package, um, and that will throw you off guard a little bit because this feels like a distribution that was made well, like today, as it were. But it, it uh, the 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 support the packages that are that it's built off of are a little bit on the older side. You do get that with other distributions like um like with the Linux Mint Cinnamon Edition, for example. You got a great new um you got a great new uh, desktop environment there, plenty of, of like newer apps on top of it, but the underlying system is a, 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 is it gets older. It gets gets a little bit ropey towards the end of its uh, of its natural life cycle. When I, when I say the end of its natural life cycle, I'm talking about the two years before another one comes out, not the you know the five years that you might run it on a server for. So uh, it comes with the KDE standard KDE offerings. I've installed Synaptic Package Manager because I do not like Discover. Discover. Um, it does crash on me from time to time, truth be told. It's a crash and then you just restart and you get back into it and you really haven't lost anything. Um, but, um, yeah, like it's the same Discover and it's the same app that I'm not... Like, I don't know why you need to take up, like, the entire vertical space of the screen for just three apps. I, you know, I don't see that as being amazing. But again, it's easy enough to switch out. This being a KDE distribution, like it does mean that they'll probably almost always opt for the KDE choice over the one that they might think is best for the consumer. Or I suppose it might turn out, or they might argue, that K the KDE choice is the one that's best for the for the end user. But it is worth bearing in mind that it seems like this is a distribution designed to showcase the KDE Plasma desktop before it's a usable, functional, user-friendly desktop for the end user. Although it is. So, uh, now I've got on my second computer here, I've got the KDE Neon website up. And it does give you a QA. and a It's just worth reading the Q&A. Now, the website itself is just a branch of the KDE um, website. It doesn't look especially user-friendly, but you also don't get lost in it either. So, for example, on the download page, it'll give you like four versions, two developer and two... 
um, like end user distributions. It's not too hard to work out the one that you want, but again, if you were going for like a super user friendly distribution, like for example, Pop OS, then you would only have the essential distributions on the front, and Pop OS has uh, NVIDIA and non NVIDIA uh, versions, which I, I think is actually a good way of doing it, but uh, we'll see if other distros catch on. But it says, what is KDE Neon? So it says here that KDE Neon is a rapidly updated software repository. Most users will uh, want to use the packages built from released software, which will be available soon. KDE contributors and testers can use the packages built from KDE Git. It uses the foundation of the latest Ubuntu LTS. And it, and it says here, is this the KDE distro? And they answer by saying, no. KDE believes it is important to work with many distributions as each bring unique value and expertise for their respective users. This is one project out of hundreds from KDE. So the website itself explicitly claims that it is not the KDE showcase distribution. Um, and if I was just handed this as a distro and say, oh, all right, this is pretty good, make use of it, I wouldn't assume that it was either. So... Um, that's worth bearing in mind. However, when I read the website and I look at the distribution and I, you know, read between the lines, a lot of it does seem that KDE Neon is designed or envisioned as this distribution, which, you know, if you want to see the best of what the KDE desktop can offer, you know, this is it. And I mean, if I'm completely, you know, honest here, the KDE desktop, um, from from Kubuntu, from the latest Kubuntu, is great. The KDE desktop from KDE Non is great. There isn't really that much of a difference between the two. If you gave me one and you gave me the other, but was you know switched the names around, I probably wouldn't notice in a lot, a lot of cases, except, of course, in the cases with the, the slightly older or fewer packages in the long-term support repository. So um, I can't necessarily imagine the kind of user that would want the latest and greatest cutting edge KDE software, but want that on top of a um, long-term support version of Ubuntu. I can't imagine like an end user that would want really new and up-to-date software in, in this particular capacity, but not over here. And, uh, you know, I suppose to that end, I would assume that for more of a KDE showcase distribution, maybe, you'd, you know, like I, I would have naturally gone for an Arch based uh, setup because as I understand it, KDE gets released on Arch incredibly quickly as well. Basically, between a few hours between this and KDE Neon, I'm told. So, um, but um, I've been playing around with it for a week as a day to day use desktop. And it's great. Like it is. It's great. Um, it's to be honest, it's softened me up towards KDE a little bit as well. I know that I made some comments on my Kubuntu video that KDE, like, it did feel like this ever-present desktop with a lot of bells and whistles and a lot of features that I didn't seem to really use. And that is the case here. But for something that you can just pick up and use, no fuss, no muss kind of thing, it works well. It works well. It runs smoothly. Uh, if I want an application for you, I love the KDE launcher. You can just push the meta key, Windows key, super key, whatever you want to call it, and then start searching. And you've, you know, you, you're already there. You're already, you know, you've already got what you want. Um, and it's smooth and it looks nice. And maybe the text is a bit small and there isn't enough contrast for, um, you know, users with any kind of like visual impairments or accessibility issues. But, you know, and, and, and the theming issue still stands. I don't like how they, um, for example, if you go to like look and theme here and you go to get new looks, it'll come up with a whole bunch of stuff here. Now, as I'm, t I'm told, the adapter KDE is actually quite a nice um, look here. But you get you download like the look and feel, which is like the overall theme for the entire desktop and apps and all that kind of stuff. Very few of those ever work. Um, and then you've got get new looks on things like the desktop theme as well. So install new theme down here. Uh, and it gives you a few more options when you sort of crawl into it. And I think one of the things I was thinking to myself about KDE's customizability is that there appear to be a lot of options but at the end of all those options, in a lot of cases, I still feel like I have to make some kind of compromise in the usability in some way or another. Um, so it feels like, you know, options don't equal customizability. But um, but all in all, like, it's a solid distribution. Like, I installed my Dropbox. Dropbox sometimes gives some desktop environments a bit of grief. Uh, I've installed Redshift GTK version because that's, that's just the one I use, but it works fine. It works flawlessly. Um, have I got that to set? Um, 
yeah, enable an auto start. Redshift is a great little app, by the way. Simple screen recorder. Um, well, if you're seeing this in video form and not through screenshots, then you know it's worked. But um, uh, yeah, like I've got to say, like everything works really well. Had zero problems with it. Pretty much the same as Kubuntu in, in reality. Yeah, maybe Discover might have dropped out on me or one or two crashes, but really, like it's not a memorable thing, and it's not like you lose work when it happens. And I'm sure they'll sort out Discover in the future. So, uh, and I know a lot of people who follow me on Mastodon actually use KDE Neon and have found it quite enjoyable as well. So it's definitely got its user base and um, there's definitely a fair number of people that are quite fond of it. Um, I believe, in fact, Chris Fisher from Jupiter Broadcasting uh, managed to revive like a really old laptop by putting in a solid state hard drive, uh, a good graphics card and um, KDE Neon. Because, you know, those things can, can sort of, um, they take a lot of the load off the processor, I'm told. So it can actually make computers last a significant amount longer, which is, which is always good. So all in all, a really good distribution, and I've had pretty much zero issues with it. Now, one thing I will say before I go. Now, it's a, li it's a little bit difficult to try and work down what the end user, the, you know, what the, the stereotypical end user for this kind of distribution might be. Because on one hand, you've got the latest and greatest KDE packages, but on the other hand, you've got Ubuntu L LTS other packages. Now, I've checked, because I use Kden Live so much, and it's a fantastic piece of software that over the past couple of years has just come on leaps and bounds, and it comes with an up-to-date version here. It comes with um, 17.8.3. Um, so it certainly comes with a newer version of Kden Live. So if that's a particular issue, um, then you've got that um, sorted. However, of course, um, the latest LTS of Ubuntu doesn't come with things like Simple Screen Recorder and Open uh, and OBS Studio. That being said, they're easy enough to install themselves separately. But um, yeah, like it's a, it's a stable base with uh, with an up to date version of Caden Live on top. So if you happen to be so so in terms of that particular piece of software. Uh, I suppose KDE Neon fits that particular niche rather well. Uh, that being said, though, you can get the latest version of, of uh, Caden Live on like Arch and, and Manjaro and those kind of things reasonably easily as well. And it is a little bit interesting to see that, well, I mean, it is based on Ubuntu and they do give their reasoning for why it's based on Ubuntu on their FAQs and on their website. But it does seem that if you're interested in the latest and greatest KDE software, um, you might be interested in the latest and greatest other software, in which case Arch is probably going to be uh, a little bit more suitable, albeit a little bit more work to maintain and um, and install and set up. Not necessarily. Um, in fact, if you used Antergos, you'd probably be um, in a reasonably similar boat, I'd imagine. But that being said, uh, I've always been a fan of the Ubuntu base. Um, and I I got to admit, over the past couple of weeks, KDE, Plasma, it's it's all been growing on me. And it is those small issues, like with Discover and the theming, um, that they they sort of like like they bother me. But you know they're clearly superficial and easily rectified. Um, and it's not like, of course, any other distribution doesn't have its issues as well. And a lot of distributions, um, and a lot of desktop environments rather, you know, they're made by how they're woven into their distribution. In my my opinion, um, so um, so I think maybe KDE Neon wanted to to have some kind of that in terms of a demonstration. Well, whatever it is, like it's it's good. <laughs> That's what I'll say about it. Uh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It ran well. It ran smoothly on my lower end Entroware Triton laptop. Um, I had a lot of fun with it, and um, I wanted to get this uh, distro review um, out the door because, of course, Fedora's on its way. New Fedora. So, and also there's a new uh, Linux Mint which has had a beta released. So, a lot of exciting distributions on the horizon before the end of the year. So, um, I better get you know back to the mines, Chris. Uh, I'll uh, catch you guys later. But thank you very much for watching. Um, this has been KDE Neon. Give it a spin if you are so inclined. I it, it's it's pretty good. Although, like I say, the target audience uh, is like uh, you know I'm not like sure that they're you know. I'm not sure what that target audience might be, but hell, it's good. So, you know, you can't take that away from it. Thanks very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.